Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. Welcome to the Artsy Second Sunday video hop for October 2021. Make sure that you go down below the video and hop through to all the great artists and creators that are making content for you today during this hop. Make sure you give them some thumbs up, give them some love, subscribe to their channels. I guarantee you'll have fun and you'll get lots of inspiration from all these fun people. So I am starting out my project today by making a drawing of a wombat. <clears throat> a wombat is a marsupial that is living in Australia and Tasmania, places like that. And it's an interesting animal. And I was reading up about it because I'm doing these art journal pages every day um, that have to do with characters and creating characters in your art journal. That, that's for hashtag AJOS Peculiar Persona, which is um, the group that I run with Peg Robinson. And we're doing art journal pages every day. And today's prompt was Walena Wabbits Wombatson. And so Walena needed to be a wombat. So I started out by reading up and looking at pictures of wombats because I'm not that familiar with that character. And I found out that they are marsupials, which means that they have a pouch that they carry their young in. And they are um, generally from Australia areas down in the down unders. And that they are nocturnal. They eat plants and, um, you know, the herbivores. And so I decided to make a baby wombat. I thought Walena would be a baby wombat. And I was thinking about the comparison between animals that I, I am familiar with and live with, well, live near me, <laughs> um, being the javelina. They're nocturnal. They are herbivores. They have poor eyesight. Um, they sounded so similar, but yet so different from a wombat. So I was thinking about the common commonalities of this animal versus that animal and the differences. The differences being that wombats burrow under the ground and javelinas live above the ground and generally hang out kind of in dirt, dirt barrows that they dig, but they're under trees, but they don't go under the ground. They're both four-legged mammals. Javelinas don't have pockets to carry their young. They're born live. But um, what I thought was the same was that they're nocturnal and they're herbivores. And one thing that javelinas do <laughs> here in Arizona, and I wonder if wombats do the same thing, is when you put your pumpkins out for Halloween and fall decor, they come and eat them. And so I thought I would make a page about a baby wombat that's just been released from the pouch that's hungry and went foraging and decided to eat some pumpkins that someone had out for Halloween. So I thought that that would bring everything together for this hop, which has a lot of Halloween themes and other type of themes, and that challenge that I'm doing every day so that I wouldn't have to make two different videos for this day. So to start out with, I decided to use a, a black paper journal. So this one is a Dilusions dialogue journal that has all black pages because wombats are no nocturnal, so they're out at night. And I was also thinking about um, burrowing in caves and underground, and I thought I would use a stencil and just make the background more interesting by stenciling some different fall colors like um, quinacridone gold and um, raw umber and uh, quinacridone orange, those type of colors, and then also, so, also some micaceous iron oxide, which is a black that has uh, sparkles in it. And I would, I would stencil that on the background just to give me an interesting background on my page. And then I would make my pumpkins out of collage. Of course, I'm a collage artist, so just about always not every single, not every single time, but just about always, I do some sort of collage on my projects. So I took a piece of deli paper and just laid it over the top, um, trying to place everything. I decided my baby wombat would be on top of the pumpkin. These probably are pretty large pumpkins if a wombat is on top of them, and then that's maybe not 100% proportionate because I think the the wombats are are 
probably uh, three feet long when they're grown and uh, maybe f between 40 and 70 pounds. So my wombat is definitely a baby, just born, because otherwise <laughs> this wouldn't make sense at all. It's so funny when you're trying to make sense of things and you're trying to get all these things mixed together onto one page. But I'm telling you, Walena Wombat's hungry. Walena Wombatson, she's hungry. She's looking for pumpkins. She's going to chow down on some big pumpkins and grow into a much bigger wombat. So my deli paper scrap, I just put it over the top and drew a general outline of these pumpkins I was planning on making. And then I grabbed a couple um, boxes of my papers, the oranges, oranges and yellows. Uh, these are my collage papers that I have that I save all my, my gel prints and, you know, just all kinds of stuff in those boxes sorted by color. And I'm using my Liquitex Matte Gel Medium to just glue down all this these pieces of the paper, tearing it and making it kind of into, um, you know, there's some light shining at the top of the pumpkin that's making it look more yellow. And then when it gets down to the bottom of the pumpkin, it's much darker color, more orangey red colors. So that was my concept. I was... Uh, obviously not gluing this fast and this is sped up eight times fast here in this section of the video in order to get it to fit into 15 minutes which is required for this hop so it's I'm, it looks like my hands are just speeding through it but it really wasn't that fast i was thinking about color tearing the shapes thinking about where it should go i wanted to have a line of change here on the edge between the two pumpkins um, making the shorter pumpkin in the front and the a taller pumpkin in the back so I needed to think about what colors I was going to put I tried to put darker colors on that edge to make a shadow on the taller pumpkin and then lighter colors on the smaller pumpkin in order to get that that line but I'm also going to do some shading with uh, some watercolor pen so it's not that big a deal so then I cut them out um, when you collage onto deli paper before putting it on your page or your canvas or whatever you're doing with it. Um, it's a very thin layer that can just sit there in between and be glued down. You'll never even know it's there. And it makes it easier to cut out the shapes than to like try to make your collage go right into the place, you know, carefully along those lines. It's, it's quicker to do this. So definitely for art journaling, I do it that way. So then I want to make sure that everything is dry. So I get it all glued down and then I set it aside. Oh, first I decide it better have some leaves or something. So um, to make it look like it's out in the patch and not, well, I mean, you know, maybe it's not in the patch. Maybe it's fall decor on someone's yard, which I have done. I used to put out a hay bell and I'd put a couple pumpkins on it, maybe a little scarecrow guy, but I just don't do that anymore because the, the javelinas, the nocturnal herbivores, come and eat the darn pumpkins. They also will eat any uh, flowers like chrysanthemums. I used, I used to have some pots out front that I would put flowers in. They would just come and eat them. They're brats. So I'll bet you wombats are brats too. <laughs> I just, I just imagine that they might have some similar characteristics of being bratty. So now that I have my wombat, my little baby wombat um, cut out, and by the way, I sketched it on dictionary paper because wombats are furry, and I didn't want to have to make a bunch of little marks to make it look furry. And so I thought by putting it on dictionary paper that has a lot of little tiny writing on it, it gives that idea that there's some sort of texture without me sitting there and making a bunch of tiny little marks. So I needed to do this quickly. So I am using watercolor crayons to color it. It's going to end up looking like a watercolor kind of because I'm going to blend those with water. So these are the Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons from Cron Dash. I really love these. If you're going to buy some watercolor crayons, I would suggest these as your choice because they're highly pigmented. They're creamy enough to write on the paper without tearing it. And they are easily water, water soluble if you want to blend them. So I have a water brush 
and I'm just going to blend, uh, blending the lighter colors into the darker colors. So you can see there that I put a lot of different colors on there. What is there? Seven colors there. I think I didn't use one of them. So I used six different colors plus that pinky, pinky peach color to go around the ears and the nose. Um, so I guess seven, seven different colors of crayon and I just I scratched it on where I wanted it, but then now I'm blending it so that it's blended into it, each other. <clears throat> so that's how I use the crayons to make kind of a watercolor effect. But I don't want to go too crazy with it. I should have, I might have wanted to put another layer on to make it a little bit more intense color after it was dry because you know a watercolor product, once you've blended it, it dries, it, it, it fades out. It's not as bright. But on dictionary paper, I'm not going to do that. It would just tear. So then I added some splatters uh, with my white acrylic paint pen because I wanted kind of that idea that it was nighttime, even though I've got this, this underground root system and everything behind. I still, I mean, this is all figurative. It's not real, right? So I'm giving the ideas of, of things without actually physically having them. So just having those little splatters splats in in the background kind of make me think of stars in the sky it's nighttime this baby wombat she's out there uh, looking for pumpkins so that was my concept um now i've got a color brush from pentel this is a sepia toned one so it's a dark brown and it's got a watercolor ink uh, in it but it's got a brush at the end like a water brush so i'm using that to add shadows, um, lines of delineation around the edges of my pieces, blending those out with the water brush, water tank brush. It's got water in the in the handle, and then um, that helps helps the collage blend into the background and makes it more unified. Then I still needed something to make it a little bit cuter, so I decided that that this wombat has dug into this pumpkin and she's kind of inside of it. And the top of the pumpkin is um, on top of her head because, you know, she's dug down into it. That was, I thought that would be cute. So I cut out another little piece, um, the top of a pumpkin and a little stem and added that to the page just to give it a little bit more, a little bit more character and to kind of fill up that upper left corner because things seemed out of balance. You know, I'm all about balance. <laughs> so the, the last couple things I did, I did add a little bit of color with one of the um, orange yellow crayons um, to make the edge of the top of the pumpkin look like it's been, you know, taken apart. Of course, it looks like it's been cut with a knife. So it must have been a jack-o-lantern, you know. Then I had this little cutout of a pumpkin, which I wrote the prompt Walina Wombatson and glued that on so that I remember that it's it's one of the challenge pages. And I was pretty much done except for a few white highlights. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment or question below, subscribe if you haven't already, and go hop, hop, hop through everyone else's videos. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.